Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Breezy Cast. Um, today we got a 4v4 on uh, one of Supreme Commander's uh, go-to team game maps uh, remade for TA called Sentence Clutch. An absolute banger of a map. Um, so let's introduce our teams and players here. We got... DCO Leatherneck here on the bottom playing Core in the orange. And uh, got Tag Arc. Um, not actually in Tag. He did is a uh, it's he actually changed his name as a joke, but then he realized that he couldn't change it, so he's stuck with that name for quite a while. Um, I believe he's in FFAX. Um, so this is FFAX Arc in the white playing as arm. And then over here, playing as core in the red, we have a Stagma Jr. And uh, in the center slot, we got Cool Nick, the God of Winds, baby. And so that's Team Southwest. All right, here we go. Team Northeast, we got FN um, playing as the, the teal color arm. And it looks like, oh, Postal's going air. So, um, Postal, aka Total Annihilation Replays, um, playing as core, as always. And uh, he's going for an air first, so he looks like he's going to do some bombing. Um, here in the back center slot, we got Tag Metten, my clan mate, playing arm in the purple. And then on the top here, we have Sergeant. Sergeant Sir. Playing as Core in the blue. So, pretty standard openers from everybody. Looks like Pulsa wants to get aggressive early here with the bomber. Um, I actually like this this play here. Um, but he does, does need some energy from his team. I'm not sure if his team's actually sharing him energy. It doesn't really look like it. <laughs> um, so, his bomber's not going to be as fast as it should be. And he did do a full. He did a full walk to all of his mexes. Usually when you go air, you wanna, um, um, you'll build like a, a wind, one mex, and then maybe another wind, then go to the factory at the most. Um, because you wanna get the factory out as soon as possible, get the bomber started, and then your team shows you the energy that you need to get the bomber out, and then you can do some serious damage um, because they won't even have anti-air up yet. And that bomber arrives uh, but postal going for a little bit of a slower start but he gets to build up more metal in his bank early so he can transition so that's the trade-off nice run there gets two mexes and he's going to continue on get some bombing done on arc pretty solid run there so it took out five mexes total pretty good um, it's good to see uh, Leatherneck and uh, Ark um, build some early anti-air. So they were expecting air. Looks like Stagma is getting some up now. Doing a very good job at protecting his mexes at least. He's got winds queued up. So you build these winds in front of the, the metal extractors to basically protect them from bombers. Okay, we got some action in the middle. Looks like Ponex trying to put on some pressure. FN, um, gonna stop that with with ease. There's there's no way a gonna be able to break that. Um, your units move really slow through this choke, so whoever's playing defense here has a insane advantage because um, they can get a nice concave here, and it just makes it really hard. You have to really overwhelm them with units if you want to break this this uh. This choke here. Uh, so let's take a look around. Right, so FN reclaimed his factory and then rebuilt it, but further up. Okay, interesting. Maybe he just didn't have the the metal to afford building units early on, so he decided to reclaim it. Okay, interesting. Um, I don't really like this push. I mean, they are flashes, though. 
and Postal's trying to bomb uh, the Peewee's here. Not sure if that's really worth all that time to do that. There you go. Now he's bombing some extractors. Let's get a couple. And see, since Postal did take these uh, mexes a lot earlier, he already has a K-Bot lab out, so he's already transitioning out of air. Um, still gonna make bombers, but at least he gets his K-Bot up a lot earlier than he would if he did it. Walk to those mexes. Oh, FN actually snipes a, a construction K-Bot there. So these flashes actually sneaking through and uh, doing a lot of damage. A lot more than they should have, I think. And here comes Pulse with another bomber. Looks like he's trying to sneak by and head towards uh, Stagma, but Stagma also went, he rushed air second. Um, now, if I was Stagma, I'd go, I'd look for Pulse right away, because usually when you go air, you don't really have air defense. So now that Pulse's bombed here, he's. And he's seeing that uh, Stagma is making bombers. He's probably going to react and make some missile turrets. Oh, he already has two. He'll probably want some more, though. And I'm not, not sure if his teammates actually know that Stagma's area. See, nice bombing run there from Stagma. Um, that's going to hurt Postal's metal bank quite a bit. And gets two more mixes with that bomb. Very nice play here from Stagma. And Sergeant Serve doesn't, he only has one missile turret. Oh no. Yeah, that's not going to be enough to kill that bomber. Uh, looks like Metin, Metin's got three. That's pretty solid. It's going to want some down here, though. Um, like, if Stagma really wanted to, he could really try hard micro this bomber. Uh, right in this area here. And pretty much bomb all those wins for free because there's just no missile turrets in range. Really solid bombing here from Stagma. And see, since he went K-Bot first, he has a lot of this. He has a lot of build power so he can pump these bombers out. A lot faster than a postal can. And uh, looks like Sergeant Serves getting in the water, getting wet. And so is Ark. He's got Skeeters coming out. Uh, we'd like to see Ark send these Skeeters to the shore here. So what, we can actually do some teamwork with Stagma. Uh, as well with that. Nice bombing from Stagma here. Yeah, gets a little, nah, one more win on the way out. Um, so, man, Stagma's just really bombing. I can't even, okay, it gets taken out by all the slashers. And it looks like Postal did a bomb run too. Got a couple mechs here at the front. Um, so what I was saying is Arc, Ark and Stagma can do a nice little combo here. Uh, Ark can send these Skeeters up, and if Stagma has a bomber coming in, you use the Skeeters to draw the fire uh, from these missile turrets, right? And then you have the bomber come in and do damage. And it basically gets uh, free reign. He'll have to manually target the bomber if he wants to kill it. Looks like Postal is going for another bomb run. Probably one of my favorite things to do in Total Annihilation is bombing. It's it's a lot of fun when you learn how to do it. and um, You can cause a lot of chaos and people <laughs> get really annoyed at you when you're a good bomber. Very nice run there from Postal. Get two more mechs. almost got a third one, but... Um, Leatherneck putting a good, putting a wind right in a good spot there to block that from dying. Metal is very precious, so you want to protect it as best as you can. So that's why they build these wind generators in front. So it looks like 
Leather is gone. Leatherneck's gone C, and he's building some C resources early on. He's already got two cons getting titles out. Uh, I'm not sure how good titles are on Setton's Clutch, but I'd assume it's pretty decent. At least plus 20, which is the standard. Uh, FN just building up wins, so he's just trying to get more resources. Building up his economy. Same with Metton. He's got a lot of wins queued up, and he's rushing a Moho Metal Maker. Very efficient. It's just a, an advanced Metal Maker, but it's uh, very efficient on on giving you metal for the E cost. And Cool Nick, doing Cool Nick things. Building, uh, he's going to build probably the most wins you've ever seen in a game. So you get to see that live. He's got a lot of Metal Makers. No advance yet, though, so. When you do queue up this many wins like this, um, you're basically spending all your economy uh, building these wins. So you don't really have any economy to go advanced um, like Metin is. So Metin's going to get the benefit of these advanced mohos uh, early on. Uh, what I find to be the best is kind of like a mixture between what Cool Nick is doing and then... Kind of like how Metton played it. He built, probably had like four or five cons max on wins. And then he built some metal makers. And then he goes into advanced right away to get the mohos as well. Um, but the longer Kulnik goes untouched here, like his, his economy is really going to boom once he gets his advanced up. So there's a trade-off. Another good run there from Postal, um, even bombing some titles. So really uh, keeping Leatherneck on his toes here. See, Leatherneck's stalling because of that bomb run. So doing some pretty good economic damage, and it looks like Leather's trying to get into some advanced K-Bot. Most likely you'll see Moho Mines and probably some Gimps out of here, which is your Amphibious... Uh, it's an amphibious unit that so goes on water and land. Very good for... Uh, and they do canter these Skeeters quite well. Lots of bombers here from Postal. Curious to see if he's going to kind of like stack those and just try to bomb, or is he going to send them in one at a time? Okay, let's take a look. Looks like Stagma, you know, he did his damage with the bomber, so he reclaimed it. It was advanced so he can further his economy. I like that. Because it gets to a point where the bombing is just, it's just not going to do much anymore. And uh, I think they're getting to about that stage. Uh, I think if Leatherneck builds some missile turrets right here, like this bombing, um, he'll pretty much stop this bomb. It looks like somehow Ark has... Um, Somehow Ark just, he's got a feeling, you know, he's got a feeling something's down here and he's going to find those bombers. He's got a feeling. Ark going into advanced K-Bot as well, and it looks like Coolnick is now starting his advanced. <laughs> just, <laughs> just look at those wins. So Coolnick definitely has the most economy. Uh, Stagma not too far. Actually, metton has got... Um, yeah, he, Menton's got the most economy by far. And that's the benefit of those early Moho Mines. And uh, now he's got Farks on the way. So these are like your advanced build power unit. You can put those on factories or help. They can guard cons like your construction units to build things really fast. If you have the metal for it, of course. Let's take a look at what Sarge... What has uh, Sergeant Sir have been up to here? So it looks like he's just getting some C economy metal makers. Also saying, push with bulls or turtle up BB. And FN says okay. FN kind of asking uh, how he should 
play this out. I see BBs usually win. Uh, BB is a very solid choice. BB is well. And uh, BB is a Big Bertha. It's the long range artillery cannon. And it looks like some good team play here. So Metton shared postal and advanced con so he can get his, uh, his moho mines up. So that's going to help him surpass Leatherneck in the economy. But. Oh, the next guy his own advance now, and he's working on it. Postal getting into some title farming as well, and <laughs> so is Stagma. Everybody's kind of got the same idea here. It's just uh, we're in the big eco boom phase. Looks like Metten Scott, a retaliator, queued up, and he does have one, so it's going to build pretty quickly here. Um, it's already one fourth way done. So it looks like he's planning on nukes and he does have air. So I see Hawks in the imminent future. And he already. Hit. Oh, very nice. So he. Men's made C and he's got Farks. I like this. This uh, He's got Farks guarding his uh, shipyards. So. Now, with uh, the more build range in Protate, I think basically all the cons and stuff got some more build range. You can actually do this stuff now where you can kind of use the land cons to guard out your sea factory if you can get it close enough to the shore, which is very nice. So now he can use these Farks to really like boost his economy. He's going to build these Colossus, um, which they are aircraft carriers, so they repair... They repair like aircraft when they take damage. Um, you can turn these on and then uh, it'll repair your aircraft, but it also gives you um, a good chunk of energy. So, and these Farks are gonna make these pump out very fast. And Metten's already starting another one. So he's really just working on uh, just furthering his economy in the sea. So we'll probably see like underwater fusions, all that kind of stuff. The nuke is halfway done. And uh, looks like Kunix finally getting his moho, his moho mines up, his advanced uh, mexes. And he's got a lot of build power on this uh, advanced Kbot lab and he's pumping out pelicans really fast. And honestly, I don't really see much counter for it. Um, these searchers are not what you need to stop those. But also does have his own advance now. So um, Gimps are very, very good against the Pels um, in straight up engagements. I think Gimps are definitely stronger in straight up engagements. But uh, Pels are a little bit more maneuverable and... Uh, they have a longer range missile. They're better against air, their missile is. So I think overall, um, Pels are better, but in straight up engagements, Gimps are king. So there's a bit of a trade off between the two factions. Kunik going air, probably got Ox on his mind. And very nice. Uh, Raid here from Sergeant Serve. And Menton's got a lot of ski. He's Menton's come down to help too. Uh, Stagma does almost have a sub out though. If he can get this sub out, um, he can slowly kill off all these skeets, but these skeets are going to do a lot of damage regardless. <clears throat> At the end of the day, with this sub here and Gimps are coming out, uh, this is going to be a lot of wreckage for Stagma if he can. Because there's no way these skeets are going to like kill Stagma, right? They're they're going to slow his economy down, and, which is nice, but a lot of wrecks are going to be left here for Stagma. Take a look. Let's 
take a look around, see what Ark's up to. Ark's got... Oh no, that's uh, Leatherneck's fusion just queued up here. So, Ark... Typical Ark, his favorite unit, I believe, is the Pelican, and he is building Pelicans. Uh, Leatherneck saying this is going to get laggy. Uh, I think... Hopefully he doesn't have any connection issues this game. So Leatherneck working on more sea economy. Um, Ark building Crusaders, which uh, partner up very well with Pels and Skeeters. Yeah, it looks like Stagma's gonna clean this up. And see, now he's got all this reclaim here. I'm actually surprised um, Serve or Menton didn't put a uh, a searcher or a skeeter over this so when a ship dies over a wreck it'll make the the wreck that was under it disappear so that'll it basically denies reclaim and this is a big chunk of metal here that stagma gets to keep that uh metan or serve could have easily denied all right let's see what we got going on in the middle here um so since coolnick has been focusing on Pels, looks like FN's got... We got the Lugers. Which are long-range artillery vehicles. And he's got some Bulldogs here. And a lot of flashes. He could just push in here. Um, but that is a lot of <laughs> empties from Coolnick, And he is reacting to this with... Uh, shooters. I think this is a solid choice there from Kulnik. And he does have a radar jammer here, which makes it hard for FN to target this, so he can't really use the radar anymore to target. That's why you're seeing these scouts fly over, so you can use that as vision. Kulnik pushing in with the peewees. Uh, not going to do much versus those bulldogs, though, that's for sure. No, no, no. Um, searchers versus Gimps. Uh, this only ends one way, and uh, the Gimps are slowly going to just kill this whole Skeeter Searcher army. So, uh, Sergeant Serve is going to have to transition into something else um, if they want to deal with these Gimps here from Stagma. Surprised Coolnix not used these Pels yet. So here you are, one of my favorite units in the game, Shooters. Um, they do have a long reload time, but uh, they basically one-shot these flashes with their gun. And But the, they are kind of slow. So if these flashes can close the gap, they can actually kill the, the shooters um, with their slow retime and then their slow movement speed. You have to baby him and kite. So I like what Kulnik's doing. He's switching into warriors to deal with the flashes. He just needs something in front of the shooters to kind of like, you know, tank some of that damage so they can't just run up and kill the shooters. And he's queued up some ambushers. Once... Oh, but uh, FN doing a good job targeting uh, the construction units first. Oh, but Coolnick's actually going to use the Pels to kind of sideswipe, go around the main choke, and hit FN. I don't think he was expecting this at all. I don't even, does he have an advanced radar? It doesn't look like he had one. I see. Here's a nuke. <laughs> The nuke was done, and he launched it. Where is it going? Dun, 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 dun. Where'd you fire this nuke at? Oh, you're going to fire it at Leatherman? Yeah, poor Leatherman. Just can't catch a break. You got the the hard hard start getting bombed by Postal, and then now he gets nuked. Um, didn't really actually do. They only killed two, <laughs> two boho mines. I, that's pretty fortunate for leather, to be honest. 
Men's got Hawks out, so once he gets the numbers of those, these uh, gimps will be pretty useless against those Hawks. Their anti-air is very, uh, it's not good compared to the Pell. And uh, Metton doing a good job surrounding the, the gimps as best as he can to slow them down so the Hawks can kill. And uh, Serve's got a Enforcer here, which also deals with these gimps pretty well. So nice teamwork there. Oh, big push here from Ark. And looks like all the Pels got wiped out from uh, Postal's gimps. Looks like uh, Ark is marking Postal's com as com's in a dangerous spot here. Like, if he can get these Crusaders kind of, like, right here. Because you don't want to get too close to the shore. Oh, my God. What just blew up? Wait, do we have a nuke? No. Stagnus just building eco, and he's getting advanced air. So is Coolnick. And it looks like... Uh, I think I think Leathernecks having connection issues, so it looks like he's giving his base to uh, Stagma. That's unfortunate. That's odd. I wonder why. Uh, I wonder why that is. Uh, I've played a lot of team games with uh, Leather and never really seemed to have much issues. Nice push here from Coolnick. Uh, so he's got warriors in the front for vision and tankiness, so units can't close the gap on these shooters. And then he uses the shooters in the back to do the big damage. See, so look how fast these bulldogs die. And it looks like FN is also sharing his stuff to uh, Postal. So FN and Leatherneck having some lag issues, I see. So basically it went from a 4v4 to a 3v3 that quick, huh? FN suiciding his calm. Kaboom! It takes out a good chunk of shooters. So down goes FN and Leather. Unfortunate. Uh, Coolnick making advanced, advanced C for those Colossus to get that energy, like I explained. Uh, you build those for energy, pretty much. But, yeah, I mean, you can use the utility, which is like the repair pads on them, if you want. All right, so we got ourselves a game. We got a 3v3 now. And people are getting big. Menton's got one nuke. Let's see how many kills this nuke has. Only six, yeah, not the best uh, target for Menton's first nuke, to be honest. Um, but he does have a big Bertha up now, and almost another one. So he's going to use these defensively to stop Coolnick from doing this this kind of stuff. And he's definitely the furthest ahead on Hawks and all that stuff. Oh, it looks like Stagma's building subs again, so these can be... Uh, Pretty dangerous if they sneak around back here and hit all this juicy economy here. Metton using his advanced air cons to just pump out energy. So you basically use energy to make metal in the late game. That's, oh, another nuke, I see the nuke. Oh, and he bombs, the sh he nukes the shooters. Interesting choice uh, to use those nukes, uh, like Matten's nuke targets. 
I feel like he could do a lot more damage if he just nuke their bases. I don't think anybody has an anti yet. I don't even think they realize that he has a nuke in the first place, so he could do some real damage with that. Like, at least, like, nuke some of these or something. Ooh, so we got some rapiers from Postal. Very nice. It's not often you get to see uh, rapiers or brawlers, so. And they actually do a lot of damage. They're stronger than people give them credit for. So, looks like they'll hold the center for now with the hawks and the bulldogs. Benton doing a good job covering the front for his team. And uh, also has got a lot of gimps. Like, these gimps are just going to crush these pills. Hardcore. And look at all this wreckage for Postal. My god, that's a lot of metal for Postal there. And these big Berthas racking up veterancy on these uh, clumped up units. Oh yeah. <laughs> I really like the unit comp here from Stagma. It's kind of interesting because um, before Enforcers and and uh, Crusaders used to be king against like Pels and and uh, well basically Pels because Gimps couldn't even walk on, on water we got Jesus Gimps now in Protea but uh yeah they were like you use these to kill Pels like because Pels used to get stuck on wrecks so um, when they get clumped up in a wreck field they can't move and then the enforcers just shoot them down but Nowadays, I don't know, I kind of like having subs instead of the, the enforcers. There's... Or at least I think subs are better now than they were. Because now that those gimps don't have... Gimps and pills don't have that, uh... They're definitely more maneuverable now. They go over the wrecks without getting stuck, so... It's kind of like an indirect buff for pills. And then you can kind of use these subs out of range to like hit these enforcers, and it's uh, it's pretty brutal actually. It kind of changes how that dynamic works. Oh, another nuke! I spotted the nuke before I landed, and he is nuking. Ooh, now that was juicy. There you go. That's what I wanted to see, Benton. Nice nuke. Um, so it looks like Stagma definitely noticed and he's getting a fortitude right away. And uh, Stagma telling his teammate that there is nukes. Nice uh, army comp here. Army composition from Postal. You got Warlords, which just eat Gimps and Pels for breakfast. That's a lot of Warriors from Kulnik. <laughs> um, oh, that's that's plenty of Bulldogs to deal with that. So I like I like how Menton build these BBs. It kind of basically stops. Cool Nick from pushing forward here. But, yeah, you never want to leave Cool Nick untouched though, because uh, Cool Nick can he can build, man. He can build.
Yeah, and one thing gimps aren't good at is shooting air. Oh, looks like Kulnik's got a big berth of his own now. And these fortification walls are very good. Uh, they basically like nullify tier one bombers. You kind of need advanced bombers to kill uh, through these walls. You can, you still can kill it with T1 bombers, but it takes a lot more than you, you used to need back in the day. No, nope. Kulnik pushing in. So he's using his warriors provision, and then he's using the hawks in the back to uh, slowly kill off this army. Unfortunately, these bulldogs are just really tanky. So, kind of just eats up all those warriors and uh, it's going to need some more hawks to deal with that. Um, surprise. Okay, so he's making another advanced vehicle. Curious to see if he'll make uh, mobile flak. And it's just, he's just really building up, man. Right. He's got underwater fusions. He's got archers, so sea flak. And um, he's doing the very cheap, efficient way to... So he's using Skeeters just to give vision for his Hawks instead of like Gimps and Pels. It's probably the cheapest way to give your Hawks vision in, in the sea. It's a lot of subs though from uh, Stagma. He's just building more subs. He's got tons of uh, hives coming out, which is, he's building these for his energy income. So let's take a look at the economy here. So Coolnix at 14,000 energy, 300 metal, about. Sergeant Thur uh, Thurv, Sergeant Serve is on about 35, but he has 4,000. He needs to build more, uh, Sergeant Serve needs more metal makers, I think. But, and he's got a lot of warlords though. All right. It's not often you see this many warlords made, but he's got to be careful because these subs can, I don't think warlords have any kind of like depth charge to deal with subs. So he's got to be careful with that. Looks like Team Northeast has spotted Kulnik's BB and he's pushing in with the Bulldogs. He's gonna try to take this big berth out. And it looks like that C attack failed for uh, Ark and Kulnik. Uh, I mean, these warlords, if they go untouched, they just destroy everything, so. Yeah, like, they'll kill all these Pels super quick. Nom, 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 nom. Oh, but yeah, this is what Pulsar should be worried about. He's got, he's got, uh, shredders. But is it enough shredders? Okay, now he's got three out. That's definitely good. And see, all the Pels just die. It's those lasers, those lasers just counter the, the pellets pretty hard. Absolutely bonkers game so far. Pretty good. So we got uh, mobile anti-nukes, scarabs from Menton, probably a good idea. He's worried about potential nukes coming his way. Which, uh, you know, it's, this game's been going on for quite a while, so the possibility of a nuke is um, quite high. Just look at all these wins. Bonex <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of air production, though. 
So really going hard on the Hawks and Pels. And using all of his air cons to pump out uh, energy. Now is he making metal makers? Yeah, he should make more metal makers. So kind of got a, just a constant stream of bulldogs. I kind of like to see uh, Menton kind of just park these here, or at least pull them back. So, because these just streaming in one by one, they're not going to really do too much. Like if you want vision, you can just build like a one air factory and just have peepers stream in for you. I hear bombers. Okay. And this nuke is launching, by the way. Where's it going? Oh, that hurts. Very nice from Stagma there. I did a lot of damage just with four bombers. <laughs> I did a lot of damage. Okay, so this nuke is... It looks like it's armed and ready to launch, but for some reason it's not firing. So it possibly could be bugged out. I think it's just the animation's bugged. So let's take a look at the mega map. So Stagma's pushing up north and he's gonna wrap around. Wrap around this way and hit hit maintenance serve on the backside while uh Coolneck keeps them occupied right here. Yeah. Warlords are so badass, man. Oh yeah, this is gonna hurt. You can sneak these, uh, these uh, sharks. And he's got a lot of them. Like this, this one torpedo launcher's got <laughs> uh, a death sentence. And uh, I know exactly where they're heading. Right here. <laughs> Man, probably wants to retreat. I would definitely start moving those now because they're very slow. Um, he does have one advanced torpedo launcher, but he's going to need more than that to deal with all those subs. Ark having a hard time. He's just having a hard time pushing in here. Um, he's, he's not going to be able to break these warlords with just uh, gimps and pels. He's going to need something more. Let's see if he's working on anything else. I like what he's doing with these uh, water missile turrets, kind of spreading those out to just make it hard to send air and scouts in. That's a lot of hawks. Oh no. Well, there goes all of Menton's energy. Where's Menton's hawks? hurts that is such a huge hit and he's still got 14,000 energy after all losing all that it's bonkers well, it's a good thing he made some underwater fusions too and put all of his eggs in one basket oh man that hurts though that hurts All the warlords are still alive. That's, that's always nice. That's a lot of bombers. 
It looks like Stagma's gonna try to bomb something here. Not sure what. With his own bombers. Ooh. Alright, so he takes out the anti-nuke. Very nice uh, bomb run there from Menton. So now his nuke has some potential to do some damage. Although, I'm pretty sure... St I think Stagma's nuke will be in range, maybe? Not sure. Um, Bulldogs versus Pels. Uh, definitely give that to the Bulldogs. See, look how look how long the range is on those pelt missiles. It's pretty pretty good. So you can kind of like keep those out of range and just hit them with missiles. Uh, Konix got quite a bit. Uh, he's got quite a bit of a sea army here. Didn't notice that. Okay, so he's got one factory, one advanced factory on Conquerors. Man, it's just pure chaos. <laughs> yeah, also kind of fighting two people in the sea here. It's a pretty tall order. But, I mean, free vet free vet for those BBs, man. <laughs> and it uh, looks like Menton's just building up more. He's got more advanced air factories built. And he is rebuilding his uh, energy. Stagma looking pretty big himself over here. He's got a lot of air. Honestly, just a lot of everything. Pretty big economy himself. Yeah, I hear bombers. Where are they at? Yep, everybody's just absolutely huge. Let's see what Ark's up to. He's just he's just building pels, man. Ark's just building pills. And he's like, all right, I'm core. Hell yeah, I'm building some gimps. <laughs> uh. So not only does he have pills, now he's got gimps as well. Oh, very nice. I like what uh, Stagma's done here. So he knows that there's pretty much probably going to be no anti-air here. So since the bombers around the back... Is he going to get the nuke? Eh, it doesn't get the nuke, though. But it does take out the advanced K-Bot, so it's going to stop Metton from building Farks for a little bit. And takes out an air plant. And it looks like Metton says, screw that, I'm launching my nuke. Question is, where is it going to go? Look at, all, look at all those BBs. Oh, it looks like, uh, so Koenig did have another anti-nuke somewhere. Well, that's unfortunate. And, uh, looks like Koenig's building some radar plants. I actually like this. Does he have a targeting facility as well? I hope he does. He does, so he's using the radar planes uh, so his conquerors can have radar to uh, target stuff automatically. But the big problem for this C push is these big berthas. There's not really any answer for that. So, I mean, if they want to make any kind of dent, 
in this sea push they need to uh, deal with these big Berthas. And Men's got flak here. It's going to be kind of hard to do. He's got a lot of flak. He's doing a nice push down the middle. He's got flak mixed in with bulldog, so um, Hawks can't just come in here and just kill this stuff for free. I don't know, Team Team South here is looking pretty huge though. Just like on the map, they have a lot of map control. Which makes it hard to push out for Postal or, or Serve here. What is Serve up to? Okay, so he's still working on Warlords. And he is building Metal Makers now. And he's still got his big group of Warlords. His, uh... See, he doesn't have. You know, he's only got one shredder. That's not gonna stop these these vamps. So he's got to be careful where he sends those warlords. He's gonna need air cover from Metten. The longer this game goes on, though, like it's it's looking good for Team South because like Stagma and Coolnick are building hawks. Meanwhile. Uh, I mean, Pulse has just been getting hammered 2v1 in the sea pretty much all games, so he's having a hard time uh, just being able to build up, you know? <laughs> he doesn't really have a lot of room to build sea resources. He's just under constant pressure. Um, I mean, he does have a lot of wrecks, but just not a lot of space to play with. That's where that map control comes into comes into play. So Kulnik switching back into shooters to deal with uh, Matt's constant bombardment of bulldogs. That'll shut that down pretty quick. But, uh, I mean, Matt's, he's slowly creeping forward with these big Berthas. I like what he's doing. Um, a little worried, though, for Stagma and, and uh, Kulnik to use their Hawks, though, to kill. There's, there's not a lot of flak in this area specifically like you're going to need a lot more flak than like two or three to deal with all those hawks guess gimps just chilling And it looks like Stagman wants to do more bombing. Probably trying to find where that nuke is. Um, let's see if they... Oh, so he did mark it, so he does know where it is. Probably just using these uh, to draw fire. Just have the scouts ahead of you, so... Provision and... Distract the A to shoot the scouts instead of the... Oh, he's going to try to bomb the, the Colossus? Nice. A little little chunk of Menton's energy died there. And I actually thought that was all going to blow up. Usually they chain react. Blow up. So. Sergeant Serbi has got a nice push here. Um, but he needs anti-air with this army. Like one shredder is not enough. So let's see if he's working on that. He's building Skeeters. But like, I mean, if Coolnick or Stagma sends their Hawks and Vamps here. Yep, here we come. Yeah. You probably need like six Shredders to deal with this. Five or six Shredders. So let's see, is uh, what's Postal been up to? He's got a lot of rapiers. Looks like he's kind of just using them defensively. Probably not going to be a lot of openings for him to use those, like 
aggressive. Unless he like comes around the back without them noticing, maybe snipe a fusion or something. Or just use them to kill Pels. They they, they deal with Pels and Gimps really well. Those uh rapiers. So it looks like he's, at least he's parking his flak here. Um, but Cool Nick, I think he's realizing that what what Menton's doing, he realizes he's going to need some big berthas if he wants to stop uh, Menton from pushing any further up. That's a lot of hawks, but now see, Postal ha he has the adequate amount of flak that you need in the Sea Army. He's got about. Four, six, eight, nine. So yeah, you see how basically all those hawks were basically useless there with that flak there. Big push though from Yeah, but see those big Berthas, you can see the big Berthas hitting uh, these Conquerors. It just makes it so hard for them to make any kind of push in the in the sea here. If anything, he needs to park these Conquerors on the land and try to snipe these. Or we need some bombers to deal with this. Or even Hawks. You can send your Vamps and Hawks and target these. Here's some bombers. I'm curious to see what uh, Stagma decides to target. Pretty epic game, man. Pretty tall order here for, for Menton, but he's doing a great job. Like, he's fighting at multiple fronts. All right, here comes the bombers. Ouch, that hurts, man, that hurts. He basically took out all of Postal's uh, sea build power. So, basically has nothing to produce sea units anymore. And now if they can just deal with the big Berthas, they can push in. And it looks like that's what uh, Stagma's going for here. Stagma, Spartan retreating though, because uh, you don't want to fight under the flak when your your opponent also has some big groups of hawks as well there. All right, Cool Nick, what are you gonna do with these bombers, man? Where are you going? Where the heck are you going? <laughs> so yeah, Kulnek kind of returning the favor, getting his own big berth is up. Let's see how many kills this nuke's got. 43 kills, all right. Yeah, these bombing these bombing runs are really starting to add up. Um, they're just wearing Postal down slowly, bombing all of his factories and build power. Um, and that's a lot of subs for men. Then, so men making subs to kind of stop what Stagma is doing here. So, an enforcer, it does beat a sub. Um, 
but it requires you have to out micro uh, the person with the sub to win. So if you're not microing, uh, the subs are just going to absolutely destroy your enforcer. So you need to be paying attention when you um, push in against subs like that. Let's see if is anybody building mass nukes yet. Buzzsaw, perhaps. Um, we do have neutrons on the way from Stagma, so Stagma. Uh, he might not even have it build nukes. He might just use the neutrons for their uh, for their ability. Which uh, I believe they new they neutralize mobile units. I think that's what uh, Venom explained to me. I played how many hours and games of TA and I still, I've actually, I don't think I've ever actually used the neutrons or the stunners, so. <laughs> There's always stuff to learn. Even after like 20, 20-ish 20 years of playing the game. About 20 years. Yeah. Looks like, uh, Ark has got his own warlords up. And he's building C Flak. Okay, here comes and Stagma's got a huge air army. Yeah, I don't I don't know if uh Metton can deal with this. He's just got too many too many things to deal with. He does have some nicely placed uh C Flak, but Definitely not enough to deal with all those hawks or um, vamps. I don't know. I'm not sure why Stagma retreated there. He didn't need to retreat. Definitely had the advantage. Um, see, and he is using his uh, his hives to repair his hawks. So it looks like he's just going to do a quick repair and then probably send his Hawks back in. And, man, he's got a lot of bombers. Uh, so he's building Neutrons. Let's see if he has a nuke somewhere. He must have a nuke. Somewhere. Right? So maybe he's building the Neutrons first and then he builds the nuke? Maybe I'm just blind and I don't see it. I mean, there's just so much stuff on the screen. And Koenig is absolutely huge. Oh my god, look at how many air factories he's got. And fortunately, Sergeant Serve, he just doesn't have much economy. This doesn't have a lot of space to play with. He's doing his best to hold on, though. He's got these warlords in a good spot. Uh, he's kind of just helping men play defensive here. Um, there is friendly fire, though, so he's got to be careful with that. It's Agark saying Metal Haven, baby. Yeah, so he's reclaiming all this juicy metal. 700... 200. That's a lot of metal just sitting there. Let's see how much. Uh, 2,500 metal for a warlord. And uh, yeah, Postal's putting Leviathans. All right, let's go. And I did spot. Oh, dang, the nuke. And fortunately, met in the, the nukes just. They're not going to get through. He needs. Um, Stunners, if he wants those nukes to work. Uh, Jesus, that's a lot of BBs. That looks like a Vulcan almost. <laughs> Doesn't that look like a Vulcan? That's how many BBs he has. Look at that. Yeah, these bomb runs from Stagma and 
and uh, Cool Nick have really added up on men just can't rebuild fast enough and I mean he's dealing with stuff on all sides here pretty much also is doing really good with what he's got I like this night he's got a nice line of doomsday machines it's pretty much pretty much impossible to push into this unless you kill the stuff with uh, bombers and air and stuff He's got flax building up on the sea, or on the, the seashore here. <laughs> Look at the the vamp swarm, though. See, the cuff. Look how fast those flax just, you know, deal with those vamps. I killed a bunch there. Let's see. Six kills, four. And that was just from that little drive-by. So, um, Sergeant Sir finally building a good, decent amount of AA for his ships. But a little too late, maybe. Wow, these uh, these big berthers from men really kind of took a big chunk out of a uh, Kunex base. Oh man, but at this point, I don't think it even matters. It's just too much air. Men saying, let's call it. Uh, I'd say, yeah. It's, it's, it's over. It's, uh, they're kind of losing on all fronts pretty, you know, slowly. And, uh, I think, I think Menton's just lost too much, uh, economy in the, in the sea. Like, those multiple bomb runs on the, the Colossus, I mean, that really hurts, like, your progression. So, Menton taps out. <laughs> I started to start saying, well, then. He's like, what the heck, man? The fight ain't over yet. Arc hyped up. You played well this game, my friend. And there are the nukes. Okay, so yeah, so looks like Stagma is building the neutrons preemptively so he can get those loaded and then spam the nukes afterwards. So once the nukes finish, he can just spam neutrons everywhere to uh, eat up all the anti nuke missiles and then just launch the nukes after. To uh, put on the killing blow, but it looks like they won before that with uh, just air dominance from uh, Team South here. Pretty epic game here on Sentence Clust. I, I kind of like how it plays out in TA, man. It's pretty pretty good. It plays out well, so. Good job, Rock, on, uh, and I, li I like the tile set that Rock used here for, for this, uh, this map. It's giving me, like, the, the green place, if you ever played, uh, the green place, it gives me those kind of vibes. Oh, man. And it looks like Postal and Sergeant Surf tap out. Victory goes to, uh, Stagma Kulnik. And uh, Ark. And you can't forget Leather. He did have to leave early, though, with. Uh, he was having some lag issues. So. Nice job, guys. Well played. Let's just take a look at the base before we take off. <laughs> Zero nukes needed. Yeah, I didn't even get a chance to use them. 
So let's see if it'll take us to the scorer screen here. Awesome game, guys. On uh, probably one of my favorite team game maps to play on Supreme Commander, Sentence. Sentence Clutch. Um, so if you've ever played Supreme Commander, you probably know. Uh, you probably have heard of that map before. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like it's not going to go to the score screen, unfortunately, so um, that'll wrap up. Oh, it is. Nice. Perfect. Um, but it only shows uh, the people that stayed in to the very end. Um, so, yeah. That'll wrap up today's cast, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed um, some gameplay on the remastered version of Sentence Clutch um, played on Total Annihilation. Um, if you like today's cast, um, consider subscribing. Um, so you'll see, be able to see when I live stream. I've been live streaming a little bit more. Um, some gameplay and I've been doing some casts uh, on the live stream. It's just a lot easier to just fire it up and just do it. So in is when I make these videos, you have to do a lot of editing, and um, that takes a lot of time. So, um, just being able to fire up the live stream is pretty nice, and then I get to interact with all of you guys um, with the live chat. So, yeah, if you like today's cast, please subscribe, uh, leave a comment on what you guys thought of the game, and what you guys want to see next. Uh, I did um, do some beyond all reason content. Uh, I'm sure my Total Annihilation buddies will, like, what the heck are you doing? But um, I do want to, like, cast and experiment with different games and stuff. Um, but my main jam will always be Total Annihilation. So you guys don't have to worry about that, okay? And, um, yeah, leave a like, and I will catch you guys next time. Have a good one.